the Republic XF-12 Rainbow was one of the fastest, sleekest, and most advanced reconnaissance aircraft ever built during World War II's final years. Designed to outrun enemy fighters and photograph targets at extreme altitudes, it pushed piston engine technology further than almost any aircraft in history. Its performance was so impressive that early test flights left engineers questioning whether such speeds were even possible for a prop-driven design. Yet the rainbow appeared too late, overshadowed by the new jet age rising around it. With unmatched speed, perfect aerodynamics, and cameras capable of capturing entire cities in a single pass, the XF-12 was supposed to become America's ultimate strategic spy plane. The military expected it to shape post-war reconnaissance for decades. Instead, it became a forgotten masterpiece, one of the greatest aircraft never to enter production. This is the story of a plane that was simply too perfect for its own era. In 1943, the U.S. Army Air Forces recognized the need for a long-range reconnaissance aircraft capable of flying faster than any fighter. Bombers like the B-17 and B-24 were too slow and too vulnerable to survive deep over enemy territory. Engineers at Republic Aviation proposed a radical solution. A high-altitude, high-speed photographic platform that could outrun interception entirely. Their idea was ambitious, expensive, and technologically extreme for the time. The XF-12 was conceived not as a bomber or transport, but as a pure intelligence-gathering weapon. Its mission was to photograph targets with unmatched clarity before enemy defenders even realized it had arrived. This meant combining fighter-like speed with bomber-like range, something no aircraft had ever accomplished. Republic's design team accepted the challenge without hesitation. Early requirements demanded a top speed exceeding 450 miles per hour, faster than any American fighter currently in service. The aircraft also needed to operate above 40,000 feet, making interception nearly impossible. Achieving both would require totally rethinking airframe efficiency. The concept began taking shape around a new set of innovations. Engineers selected the massive Pratt & Whitney R4360 WASP major engines, the most powerful piston engines ever built at the time. These 28-cylinder monsters would provide the raw performance the design needed. Yet their huge power output also required unprecedented cooling solutions. The Rainbow's clean aerodynamic shape made that even more challenging. Republic realized that even the slightest drag disruption would prevent the aircraft from reaching its target speeds. Every panel, rivet, and curve had to be optimized for airflow. The resulting fuselage looked less like a traditional aircraft and more like a futuristic missile. Test pilots would later describe it as a piston-powered jet. By the end of the war, the design was nearly complete and ready for construction. Even before the prototype's first flight, excitement within the Air Forces was high. They believed the Rainbow might become the world's definitive strategic reconnaissance aircraft. Few expected the post-war world to change the aircraft's fate entirely. The XF-12's defining feature was its ultra-clean aerodynamic profile. Republic eliminated every unnecessary surface, bulge, or protrusion. Even its panel seams were sealed to create an uninterrupted skin. This level of refinement was unheard of for a piston engine aircraft. The wings were incredibly thin, built for maximum speed and efficiency at altitude. Their design minimized drag but demanded extremely precise manufacturing. The rainbow's long, slender profile gave it an instantly recognizable silhouette in flight. It was one of the most streamlined aircraft ever built. Inside the fuselage, engineers created a fully pressurized cabin for the crew. This allowed extended missions at altitudes normally reserved for experimental research aircraft. The cockpit layout was modern and unusually spacious for a reconnaissance platform. Crew comfort mattered because missions could last over 4,000 miles. A cutting-edge camera suite was mounted in the aircraft's belly, capable of producing incredibly detailed photographs. 
the system could capture overlapping images to map huge areas in a single pass. This made the rainbow ideal for post-war intelligence missions. No enemy nation could hide much from its lens. The four R4360 engines were housed in beautifully streamlined nacelles with carefully managed cooling ducts. Republic achieved cooling without adding bulky openings or drag-inducing intakes. This engineering alone was considered a breakthrough. Combined, the engines produced over 14,000 horsepower. The result was a piston-powered aircraft capable of cruising faster than many jets of the era. Engineers and pilots quickly realized the rainbow was unlike anything else in the sky. It felt both futuristic and strangely out of time. Its performance proved that piston technology still had untapped potential. This aircraft was designed to fly higher and faster than any American reconnaissance platform before it. Test pilots reported that its climb rate was exceptional for a piston-powered airframe. The combination of power and aerodynamics made it feel more like an early jet than a traditional propeller aircraft. Engineers shaped the wings specifically to reduce drag at extreme altitudes. This allowed the aircraft to cruise comfortably in thin air where most fighters struggled to operate. The result was smooth, stable flight even near the edge of its operational ceiling. Its cameras were placed inside a pressurized compartment so the crew could operate them without exposure to the cold. These long-range cameras produced images sharper than anything the United States had at the time. Military planners hoped this would allow complete mapping of enemy territory in a single mission. Even during early tests, the aircraft demonstrated remarkable stability for its size. Pilots praised how predictable it felt at both low and high speeds. This made it ideal for steady photographic runs without vibration or distortion. With a long, streamlined fuselage, the aircraft cut through the air with minimal resistance. Every curve was designed to maximize speed at altitude. Few piston aircraft ever matched its aerodynamic purity. Wind tunnel research confirmed that the design produced unusually laminar airflow. This gave the aircraft performance numbers that looked impossible for a propeller plane. Engineers saw it as the peak of what piston technology could achieve. By the end of testing, it became clear that the aircraft was one of the fastest piston-powered designs ever built. Its blend of speed, altitude, and photographic capability set new benchmarks. It represented the absolute limit of pre-jet reconnaissance design. Despite its promise, this aircraft entered testing at the wrong time in history. Jet aircraft were already proving their superiority in speed and climb rate. Military planners saw no reason to invest in a platform that would soon be outdated. The engines required constant precision maintenance to stay reliable. This made the aircraft extremely expensive to operate compared to newer jet platforms. The military was unwilling to commit resources to such a demanding machine. Its construction involved advanced materials and complex manufacturing steps. Factories were already shifting production to simpler jet airframes. Continuing the program would have slowed the transition into the jet age. At the same time, new high-altitude jets made piston aircraft vulnerable. Interception risk increased as jet fighters began achieving higher speeds and ceilings. This eliminated the aircraft's key advantage. Strategists also argued that long-range photography was evolving toward unmanned systems and specialized high-speed jets. The aircraft no longer fit into future reconnaissance doctrine. Its timing could not have been worse. Another issue was cost. Each unit would have been far more expensive than a jet-powered reconnaissance platform. The military preferred aircraft that could be produced quickly and cheaply. This aircraft was neither. Ultimately, the decision was practical rather than emotional. Even with its impressive performance, the world had moved on. The jet age arrived too quickly for this design to find a place in it. Although the aircraft never entered service, it left a major impact on aviation engineering. Its aerodynamic innovations influenced later high-speed designs. Many of its concepts reappeared in early Cold War jets. 
Engineers studying high-altitude flight kept referencing its performance data. The aircraft showed what near-perfect piston design could accomplish. This helped shape the transition toward specialized jet reconnaissance aircraft. Photographic experts were impressed by the quality of the imagery it produced. Its camera base systems inspired future reconnaissance layouts. Even jet-powered spy planes borrowed ideas from these early experiments. Test pilots spoke highly of the aircraft long after the program ended. They remembered it as one of the smoothest and most stable aircraft they had ever flown. Their reports became valuable case studies in high-speed aerodynamics. Prototype work was not wasted, as many manufacturing techniques developed for this aircraft carried into later projects. The attention to drag reduction became standard practice in high-performance design. Its influence reached far beyond a single prototype. Historians now view the aircraft as a technological masterpiece built just a few years too late. If it had flown earlier, it might have reshaped aerial reconnaissance. Instead, it became a symbol of the end of the piston era. Today, the surviving data and photos remind us how close the design came to rewriting aviation expectations. It stands as a final display of what piston technology could achieve at its absolute peak. Its legacy lives on as one of the most advanced propeller-driven aircraft ever created.